Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I will review the Ender 3 V2 Neo. It's the new version of the Ender 3 V2. The old V2 is currently selling at around $235, and this V2 Neo is $299. The overall design is the same, but let's see what you can get for that extra $64. As far as I can see, there are six upgrades on this V2 Neo compared to the old V2. One, a new hot end, which has been upgraded from the classic MK8 style hot end to a new design with the larger heat sink. Two, the extruder has been upgraded from a plastic single gear extruder to a metal one. Three, auto bed leveling with the CR Touch pre-installed. Four, the print surface. The glass bed has been upgraded to a PC spring steel print surface. 5. A one-piece gantry. There is no need to put together the gantry and the x-axis by yourself. 6. Other cosmetic upgrades like the front extrusion slots becoming flat for a better appearance and an updated screen UI that enables a preview thumbnail. The final change I won't consider as an upgrade is that all new generation Creality printers are no longer using a Meanwell power supply. So this Ender 3 V2 Neo comes with Creality's own brand of a PSU, instead of a Meanwell you would see on the old Ender 3 Pro and Ender 3 V2. For the rest of the features, they are the same as the Ender 3 V2, including a 32-bit motherboard, silent severed drivers, a color screen with a knob, belt tensioners on both the X and Y axis, the wheel on the extruder for easier filament feeding, a single Z axis, and there is no filament sensor. I would like to thank Pergear for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the pre-assembled gantry with the print head and the x-axis, the base, a color screen, a filament holder, and some tools. The assembly should be even easier than an Ender 3 V2. Just put the gantry on top of the base and tighten the screws at the bottom, and I prefer moving it to the side of the table to tighten them. Install the color screen, mount the filament holder, connect the Z-stepper motor cable, the extruder stepper motor, the X-axis stepper motor, and the X-limit switch. Do a final check for the voltage, and we can now turn on the printer. I will start with Auto Home, then manually move down the Z-axis to zero, and set the Z-offset. Disable the stepper motors, and manually level the four corners on the bed. Do one more round of this, and we can start Auto Bed Leveling. After the 16-point auto bed leveling is done, I will check the Z offset one more time, as when we adjust the four corners, the Z offset may slightly change as a result. Okay, we can now preheat the printer and feed in some filament, and using the knob on the extruder stepper motor shaft is much easier than just pushing it in. Let's start our first print, the 3D Benji from the micro SD card. If you use a Creality Slicer, you can now make a thumbnail like this, similar to the one with the MKS motherboard and Cura plugin. The Benji is looking good, and the layers and cooling are all fine with just a tiny bit of stringing, which was much better than what I expected from a Bowden setup. It's a pretty decent Benji for being printed right out of the box. Next, I will set the printer up in my latest Cura 5.1. Just add the Ender 3 profile, as they are still the same Bowden setup. They have the same single gear extruder and settings, and so their print profile should work the same. You can rename it to the Ender 3 V2 Neo if you'd like. I will start by slicing a calibration cube using the default 0.2 print profile, and it will take 31 minutes. Other than the tips inside the X and Y, the layers look fine, and the dimensions are also accurate. Or I should say that they're very accurate compared to most printers when printing the same cube out of the box. Next, I will try a tough print, the Eiffel Tower. I tried to print this with the stock Ender 3 Pro and Ender 5 Pro with the Bowden setup, but they both clogged the nozzle as this tower requires an excessive amount of retraction. 
I will see if this new Ender 3v2 Neo can finish this print. The bottom and the middle of the tower look fine with just some stringing and there are some tiny structures of the tower missing in this area. But the tip at the top looks good. This tower is not perfect, but I would still consider it a good print for a Bowden setup. Then I will print a tank. If we just print the tank like this, we need to add quite a lot of support at the bottom and the cannon that is marked red. So I will rotate it by around 60 degrees so we can just print it with minimal support at the bottom. The details of the tank look great. These are the only areas that require removing support, but they are quite easy to peel off and the tank looks awesome. After that, let's try some different filament. I will print a T-Rex using PETG. This print surface sticks to PETG really well. The bones are all connected and movable, and this little T-Rex is very cute. Next, I will try printing with TPU. I have used this Area 1 TPU on every printer, and it has never failed, even on a Bowden setup. So I will make some end caps for a wire shelf. At first, I just printed one to try the size. The print looks pretty nice, and the size also fits, so I will print a few more. Normally, printing multiple TPU objects at once will string more than if you print just one, but the result seems okay, and these tiny bits of stringing are still pretty easy to clean up. As the maximum nozzle temperature of this printer goes only up to 250 degrees Celsius, it won't be able to print nylon carbon fiber or polycarbonate, but I will try to print a fan duct from my other printer with Airy one PTG carbon fiber. The result looks all right. It strings a little more than regular PETG. After some simple cleanup, the part still looks pretty good and it is fully functional. It fits perfectly on this IR3 conveyor belt printer. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. One, the assembly is easier than the Ender 3 V2. The entire gantry is pre-assembled, so you don't need to put it together by yourself like you would with the old Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, or Ender 3 V2, which will save you 15 to 20 minutes. 2. The new hot end seems to work better. As the heatsink is larger, it fixes one of the most common issues in the old Ender series, especially for a Bowden setup that requires more retraction distance that can pull the filament into the area between the cool and hot zone, which may cause filament clogging. On the stock Ender 3 and Ender 5, I could not print the Eiffel Tower without clogging the nozzle, as the model requires an excessive amount of retraction, but on this Ender 3 V2 Neo, it seems just fine. As a Bowden setup, it won't print as good as the Ender 3 S1 that comes with a Sprite Direct Drive extruder, but it can at least finish the print. 3. The auto bed leveling sensor is one of the most popular upgrades on the Ender 3 series. It comes with a CR touch, so you don't have to flash the firmware and do all of the upgrades by yourself. 4. It still prints as good as the Ender 3 V2 and works great out of the box with the most common types of filament. It also prints well with Airy 1 TPU as well as carbon fiber PETG. 5. The screen UI is really nice. 
I like this V2 style UI more than the new Ender 3 S1 Pro touchscreen as the menu and button locations are more reasonable. However, besides the thumbnail preview feature, I would expect some updated features as well, which I will talk more about in the cons section. 6. The PC print surface sticks well. Sometimes it sticks too well, which I will also discuss more in the cons section. 7. Some of the small details on this printer are better than average entry-level printers, like the higher quality limit switches and belt tensioners are the same as those on the Ender 3 S1. Now for the cons. 1. Creality is reserving their Sprite Extruder for the Ender 3 S1 series, the CR10 Smart Pro, and other mid-range printers like the Sir Moon V1. For entry-level models like the Neo series, they use the Bowden setup. Just moving the extruder to the print head really won't cost anything at all, and even if it doesn't come with a Sprite extruder, I would still prefer a simple direct drive rather than a Bowden setup. 2. The single gear extruder is outdated, and using a dual gear or even a Bond textile clone would be better. 3. Using the same screen UI as the Ender 3 V2 is nice, but I think some more useful features could be added, such as the manual bed leveling assistant that helps you move the nozzle to all four corners. In 2022, still needing to disable the stepper motors and move the printhead manually to different points is a little odd. Moreover, when you set the Z offset, you still need to manually move the Z axis to zero by choosing Move, Move Z, and turning the knob to move it. It would be better to automatically move Z to zero once you select Z offset from the menu. 4. Like the Ender 3 V2, it only comes with a single Z axis and no filament sensor. As a $300 new 3D printer in 2022, these features should be included. 5. The PC spring steel print surface sticks really well, but sometimes too well if you set your Z offset too low. It is not as forgiving as a textured PEI spring steel sheet, and it's also very easy to leave scratches and marks on it. So if you are somewhat of a perfectionist who wants to always see a flawless print surface, you may need to buy a PEI textured spring steel sheet separately. In conclusion, this is a solid entry-level 3D printer. However, the price of this printer is $299, which is pretty close to a mid-range printer. For around $300, you can easily find many other printers that come with the full package, including a direct drive, a dual Z axis, auto bed leveling, a color touch screen, a 32-bit board, and silent stepper drivers. Since the 3D printer market is changing so fast, if this printer was launched in 2020, it would be the perfect entry-level printer. For now, it is still a good printer, and it prints really nice out of the box, but it's facing the same embarrassing situation as the Ender 3 Neo Max when comparing its price and features to other printers in the market. I am a little worried about Creality's formula deciding which printer at what price point should have what features, which may be reasonable for their own lineup, but their competitors and customers may not think the same way. In my opinion, this Ender 3 V2 Neo is a good printer, but I won't say it's a great deal. It's not as competitive as the old $200 Ender 3 Pro in terms of price. The out-of-the-box print quality of this V2 Neo is good and is better than most entry-level 3D printers, but is not as good as the $399 Ender 3 S1 that comes with a Sprite Direct Extruder. However, $299 does still sound like a fair price for something in between. As the Ender 3 V2 is currently on sale for $235, paying an additional $64 to get a CR Touch Auto Bed Leveling Sensor, a magnetic spring steel PC print surface, a new hot end, a metal extruder, and some cosmetic upgrades isn't that bad at all. If you are interested in this Ender 3 V2 Neo, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and click the notification bell to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.